So I'm a little late to the Gretsch party. The 2020 Gretsch Electromatic line of guitars were introduced at NAMM in early 2020, but I'm just discovering them now. So I was looking for a different kind of guitar sound for recording, and I came across the Gretsch G5222 Electromatic Double Jet. It's a double cutaway shape, stop bar tail piece, and the real difference, the Gretsch pickups, all for $499. The Gretsch G5222 has a high gloss finish and comes in age natural, jade gray, London gray, and walnut stain. I especially like the walnut because unlike the other 5222s, the sides and the back were also the dark walnut stain. On the other finishes, the sides and the back are solid colors. It arrived double boxed, it was packed well, and everything was in good shape. Just be aware that there's no case or gig bag for the $4.99 price. So if you want some protection for the guitar, it's going to cost a little more. The setup out of the box was good. The action was low, but not super low where it's rattling off the fretboard. And it played great. The intonation was set up correctly and it came with 10 gauge strings. Before I get into the nuts and bolts of this guitar, let me give you some background on Gretsch. Gretsch is a very old established company and has been through a few changes. It was founded by a 27-year-old German immigrant named Friedrich Gretsch, who opened a shop in Brooklyn, New York. Gretsch was very successful, but by the late 60s, the family retired and sold the company to Baldwin Pianos. For whatever reason, Baldwin did not manage the company well, and they shut down production of Gretsch products in the 80s. In 1984, the Gretsch family was able to reacquire the company, and it's now run by Fred Gretsch, the great-grandson of Friedrich Gretsch. In 2002, Gretsch joined with Fender to handle manufacturing and distribution. It's pretty cool that the Gretsch family still owns the company. Some really great players play Gretsch guitars. Back in the 50s, it was Eddie Cochran, twangy Dwayne Eddy, and Chet Atkins. Then there was Bo Diddley with his unique, crazy-shaped Gretsch guitars. And of course, George Harrison, who had a single-cut Gretsch at the Cavern Club, and later the iconic Country Gentleman. Other Gretsch players include Neil Young with his White Falcon, and how could we forget Michael Nesbitt of the Monkees? But I think Brian Setzer really brought the Gretsch to light in the past few decades. He made Rockabilly cool again. But to my mind, the Gretsch duo jet will forever be linked to Malcolm Young of ACDC. He has immortalized this guitar as a rock machine. Gretsch has always made premium quality guitars, so much so I can never afford one. Thankfully now Gretsch makes the Streamliner and the Electromatic series, which are made in China and definitely more affordable. The fit and finish on this guitar is outstanding. The cream binding and accent stripe go all the way around the body, the neck, and the headstock. The design of the headstock and the Perloid logo is understated and classic. The tuners are die cast and have rounded rectangular buttons. The finish is beautiful. The wood grain shows through the dark walnut stain, which almost has a deep burgundy look to it. And I know what you're thinking. I didn't say Ron Burgundy. The dark walnut finish is offset by the chrome metal of the pickups, knobs, and hardware. The transparent rings framing the pickups complete the look, and it all works great together. The black pickguard features the Gretsch logo, and under it, Electromatic is written in smaller type. The older Electromatic series of guitars had Electromatic spelled out vertically on the headstock. Now it's just the Gretsch logo at the top and Perloid, which I think looks much better. The body is what Gretsch calls chambered mahogany with a laminate maple top. This is the same style build as a Les Paul, but I doubt the Electromatic series uses a thick maple cap like a Gibson. The chambered body make it lightweight and mine weighs around seven and a half pounds, which I think is pretty typical. After removing the back electronics covers, I can see how they chambered it. The wood is carved out in whole sections around the perimeter of the guitar. This is completely different from weight relief where holes or sections are removed. It's almost a semi-acoustic, but there's no sound hole. From the pickup cutouts and the rear control cavity, it appears that what Gretsch calls a laminated maple top is probably just veneer over a cap of wood, which I can't really tell if that's mahogany or maple. The shape of the body feels very comfortable to play when you're sitting, but it's definitely not balanced when you're standing and have the guitar strapped on. This is because the horns are very short and the position of the button does not distribute the weight as well on a strap. This is a lot like the Gibson SG. 
it's definitely a nose diver. It does not feel balanced and the neck wants to fall and sit too far forward. So it feels like I have to reach to play open chords and pull it back to me. If you've played an SG guitar, it's pretty much like that. The good news is there's a couple of ways to get a better balance. The best solution seems to be to install another strap button at the heel of the neck. That would shift the balance forward a little. You could also install a Bigsby vibrato tailpiece on the guitar, which would add some weight and balance the guitar better. And of course you can try a good strap and that'll help to control the weight. You might even string up the strap through the headstock like an acoustic guitar. It's kind of weird, but maybe you'll start something new. The set-in U-shaped neck has a 24.6 inch scale, 22 medium jumbo frets, and a 12 inch radius. It has a black walnut fretboard, the nut is synthetic bone, and it comes stock with 10 to 46 strings. The neck was dead on straight and there were no high frets. The frets and the fret ends were smooth as silk, no rough edges, no grittiness when bending across the frets. The neck shape is a little chunkier than I expected. The Gretsch literature quotes it as a U-shaped neck. It definitely feels like there's more shoulder than a C-shaped neck. Initially, it felt a little different to me, but I got used to it quickly. The access to the upper frets is almost as good as an SG. Even though it seemed like the heel of the neck stuck out a little bit too far, I had no trouble reaching the upper frets and I don't have big hands. Gretsch delivered the first run of these guitars with black walnut fretboards, but now they've switched to laurel fretboards. The specs are confusing because sometimes they'll list the fretboard wood as black walnut and other times it'll be listed as laurel. The fretboard on my guitar is black walnut and it's almost as dark as ebony. You don't see that many guitars with fretboards made out of black walnut. I've read that the black walnut is stained and sometimes with playing the stain comes off. I haven't had any issues like that, but maybe that's the reason they've gone to oral fretboards. The fretboard is trimmed on the side with Perloid Neo Classic thumbnail markers. I like the look of the thumbnail inlay markers over the block inlays that some of the other Gretsch guitars have. Again, it's understated and classic. The bridge adjustment and the intonation out of the box was spot on. I don't really think the tuning keys are the strong point of this guitar, but I really didn't have any problems with them either. And once the strings were stretched a bit, it held tuning perfectly. The 5222 has a V-shaped stop tailpiece, which I thought looked kind of retro cool when I first got it, but now I'm starting to think I might replace it with just a straight stop tailpiece. Nothing to do with the function, I just want to try something different. I tried a Gibson tailpiece and it fit perfectly, so I might just change it out. The wiring is a little different. There's three volume controls, one for each pickup and a master volume. The master volume allows you to set a blend between the two pickups and use the master volume to control it. There's also a master tone control and a three-way selector switch. The pickup switch seemed to have a little different throw than a Gibson type switch, and the potentiometers have a little less resistance than I would prefer. But the real problem with the potentiometers is they do not have a linear taper. They don't have an even transition from full on to off. And the tone pot on mine actually had some scratchiness to it, which I suppose could be eliminated with some contact cleaner, but it should have never come from the factory with scratchy controls. There's also a treble bleed circuit, which uses capacitors and resistors to allow highs to pass even when you roll the volume off, keeping the sound brighter as you decrease volume. The problem is the treble bleed circuit doesn't really do much. There's a loss of high end as soon as you roll back any of the volume. The controls function okay, but they could really benefit from an upgrade to CTS pots. It's not a huge deal for me since with my style of playing I'm pretty much wide open on everything all the time, but still it's something Gretsch could definitely improve on. The wiring and soldering all are good. There's no shielding in the cavity, but there sure is a whole lot of poly. The routing and the chamber carve is a bit rough, but that's something you'd never see. The strap buttons are unique on the Gretsch. You unscrew the button, put the strap on the screw, and screw the cap back on. They aren't really locking buttons, but they definitely help secure the guitar to the strap better than a standard button. Gretsch guitars have a unique sound because of the pickups. At the same time that Seth Lover was inventing the humbucking pickup for Gibson, Ray Butts was inventing a similar pickup for the Gretsch. The Gretsch pickups look and sound a little different. They definitely have a sound of their own. 
They're a little brighter and twangier. Is that a word? Than a Gibson style pickup. It's a little meatier than a Fender, and it sits somewhere between a Fender single coil and a P90, but it's really neither. It's got its own thing, and that's what I like about it. And for that reason alone, it's a great guitar to have in your rack when you want a sound that stands apart from the rest. The 5222 comes with blacktop Broadtron pickups, which use Alnico 5 magnets. The Broadtron pickups are hotter than the Filtertron and the Fulltron, and are the hottest pickups Gretsch makes. They're brighter than humbuckers and they have a lot of detail and character. They're closer to P90s than humbuckers to my ears. Here's some sound samples. Clean, crunch, and with some gain.
despite its shortcomings, I have to say I'm really impressed with the build and the sound of this guitar. It feels like a high quality instrument. With the exception of the control pots, I really couldn't find much to complain about. Acoustically, it sounds very musical, and comparing it with my other guitars, even my more expensive USA built guitars, it holds its own. And I was surprised how the chambered body gave me a sense of playing a semi-acoustic guitar. When I was playing this guitar without the amp on, I definitely feel the acoustic resonance. You know, I really wasn't even sure if I was going to like this guitar. Mostly, I guess, because it's an import and I thought it would be subpar to a higher-end Gretsch. Of course, it's not as good as a more expensive Gretsch guitar, and I'd love to be able to afford a top-of-the-line Gretsch, but it's still a good guitar. So I wasn't even sure if I was going to keep this guitar, but once I started playing it, I definitely connected with it. That's always the thing with me and guitars. I've passed on so many great guitars that I could have bought, but I couldn't afford, and I always kick myself in the ass later. So it's really nice to be able to afford one that I do connect with. After playing this guitar a while, I realized that this thing has got some character and a different tonality than any of my other guitars. If you've never played a Gretsch guitar, I'd highly recommend you try one out. It's not a guitar for everyone, but it's worthy of being right up there with some of the best in the price range. And this one is staying home with me. There's lots of choices for guitars in the $300 to $600 price range nowadays. I love the fact that you can find really good guitars for an affordable price. Don't plan on them appreciating in value or being collector's guitars, but they're great playing guitars and that's what I care about. I think that most people shopping for a good quality import guitar in a low price range are going to look at a Fender or an Epiphone first, but don't leave out Gretsch. With the Gretsch Electromatic series of guitars, you're not buying a guitar that'll increase in value or become a collector guitar. You're buying a guitar because it sounds good and it plays good. I think Gretsch has its own vibe and that's what I like about it. I put it up against all my other guitars in the studio and it holds its own. I keep coming back to the Gretsch now and picking it up first. I have to say, I'm really enjoying it. The looks alone of the Gretsch 5222 are enough to sell it. Add to that that it's fun to play and gives me a sound that's different from all my other guitars. After all this time, I finally found Gretsch guitars and I'm a fan. Thanks everyone for watching and thank you so much for all the positive comments I've received. Please check out my music on brooksreed.com, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, SoundCloud, and pretty much everywhere music is streaming. Till next time, remember, the vibrations never stop. It goes on forever.